Well, thank you everybody for being here. Um, and uh, we are really, really happy. This is our second session uh, about indigenous. And um, we are thrilled to have Frida Larios. Frida Larios, it's uh, maybe you already saw what uh, her bio in our website, but um, Frida is from El Salvador. Uh, uh, of Mestizo Heritage, and uh, she has been working with indigenous and indigenous indigenism uh, teams for a long time. She is the founder of the New Mayan League, uh, language, sorry, the New Mayan language, and she was, she's going to talk about that uh, soon. But she also, she's also, a, 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 mainly she's an artist. I, I know her because she's an artist and she's using the, she's reinterpreting the indigenous uh, culture um, in, in, in her own way. And she has been doing this at the same time. She has been exploring her heritage and her indigenism uh, in herself. And um, she's gonna share about uh, the Mayan, uh, she's uh, of Mayan heritage. Is that what I understand? No, Frida, it's your, just your heritage is uh, from indigenous Maya, and um, she will share with those. Mm -hmm. Nawa, Pipil Maya. Pipil Maya, and she's going to share with us uh, 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 about that. And um, I, we always start with a bell. And Annie will lead us now to have a bell and 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 breathe for some no three seconds or the three minute, one minute, and then we can we can start with uh, with Frida. Thank you, Adriana. Yeah, we always start with the bell because our practice here is based on the mindfulness tradition traditions of Thich Nhat Han. And that our, our intent here with these calls is that we bring to light things that we don't know. So we're, we're building our own understanding. And as Thich Nhat Hanh says that understanding is love. And so this is the foundation of the calls is trying to really um, deepen our understanding and transform the unhelpful conditioning that we may have gotten um, up until now. So we'll start with three sounds of the bell and we can just while we're listening to the bell, we can just breathe in and out and just let ourselves settle in here so that we can be ready to really absorb what Frida shares. <clears throat> but you know what? I'm gonna record first. Oh wait, it's going. Okay, it's already going. No, it's already. <laughs> All right, great. <laughs> Didn't realize, okay. Thank you, thank you. Frida, are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm gonna share my screen now so that everyone can participate in the book reading. La aldea sepultada por un volcán en erupción. The village buried by an erupting volcano. Hace muchos, pero muchos años, había un niño a quien sus amigos le decían niño verde. Porque le encantaba ayudar a su madre a sembrar maíz. El niño verde vivía con su familia en una comunidad maya. 
cada noche antes de irse a dormir, el niño verde caminaba por un sendero sagrado hacia un templo real llamado San Andrés, a donde iba a ver la ceremonia del fuego. Ahí miraba a un chamán quemar incienso de copal y enviar un mensaje al cielo dirigido a un abuelo ya muerto. And now I'm going to continue in English, <laughs> not to worry. <laughs> many, many years ago, there was a child whom his friends called the Green Child. They called him Green Child because he loved helping his mother so much. The Green Child lived with his family in a Maya community. Every night before going to sleep, the You can help me, Green Child would walk a sacred okay. path to a rural temple <laughs> called San Antonio, where he would watch the fire ceremony. I forget that people are muted. The fire ceremony. Over there, he saw a shaman burn copal incense and send a message to heaven directed to a passed away grandfather. Very close to his village, there were mountains, and one of them was a volcano called Loma Caldera. And one day, the volcano decided to erupt and throw lava and lava bombs. When the, the <laughs> green child <laughs> was eating tamales and beans, with his mother and brother. The tamales, the beans, mm -hmm. <laughs> and the mother and the brother in blue. From ceramic vessels, they made themselves. We made them ourselves. And this is the village of the family of the green child and the blue child. As the neighborhood was devastated by the smoke and the fire, the green child and his family lost no time in seeking shelter. The green child was used to play every day in the mountain, and this is why he knew it well. So he led them quickly, helped by the light of a pine torch through the dense forest. Very soon they were out of reach of Loma Caldera, angry eruption. We don't know what happened to the green child, to your right, and his family. But after 1400 years, an American archeologist called Payson made a great discovery. An adobe wall, That, was, that belonged to the green child's little home village. Payson found it hidden under many layers of volcanic ash and lava bombs. Even though the eruption devastated the village, the and his family managed to escape from the furious volcano. The ash had helped preserve the Home, oh. mm -hmm. utensils, mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. furniture, a dog, birds, and even a little mouse. Thanks to this unexpected discovery, we can now learn how the Green Child community right. built mm -hmm, their homes, <laughs> how they cultivated the maize, the manioc, the Beans and the, uh -huh, and the cacao, and how a day in the life of the Niño Verde was like. The end. <laughs> and this is a foreword by the um, archaeologist or principal researcher of the site. The book is in the resources link. 
I acknowledge the heart of the land on which we gather, traditional territory of the Piscataway First People, brothers and sisters. The artifacts of a culture are transient. Codices burn, buildings decay, language can be lost, but a narrative once told lives forever. From ancestral seed and new visual language. The pre Maya people who um, populated the richly forested cacao chocolate belt um, of Mesoamerica in their wandering journey were Neolithic hunters and gatherers. The bounty, the virgin forest, provided these nomads with more than enough for settled occupation and the beginnings of an invented agriculture. These Maya civilizations and other peoples that developed here over 3,500 3, years grew to be the dominant agrarian society trading and warring within greater Mesoamerica. The bounty that Virgin Forest uh, provided was more than sufficient for settled occupation. And we also um, developed sophisticated food production technologies that evolved in ceramics, textiles, mm -hmm jewelry this is the piece of the Zambertano museum here in dc to a high brilliance stonework can develop from tools to weapons to monumental agri agri architecture mm -hmm. and precise astronomical observation and in service of agriculture that led to mathematics, this is a bigesimal system, mm -hmm. and, and this is the way of writing the zero, which is a shell which is the idea of MC2. It's a concept invented by, by the pre-Columbian people of um, my peoples of Mesoamerica. Mm -hmm. Calendars, this is the Maya uh, Tolkien calendar with 20 days and 13 months. And what would seem infinite a period, infinite periods of time uh, that were represented by a hieroglyphic that we see here is uh, one day, 20 days, which is one month from the Tolkien calendar I just showed you, 360 days or one short year, 20 short years, tunes, the batum, the big tune the Kalaptun and the Kinchiltun, which are uh, 3,200,000 short years. This is a conceptual notion, but it's also a scientific notion. This is part of our, our knowledge that we brought to humanity. And, and all embracing cosmology that explain the past, our present and the future encompassing all these achievements and recording them in a complex hieroglyphic script, uh, the only one of its kind in the uh, pre-Columbian America. And this script, script captured um, everything, everything from history to art to mathematics and uh, the overall cos cosmovision of a people. These codexes, uh, we have thousands of them, and only four exist now in the world. Uh, and these 
the ones that exist um, are uh, in Germany, in New York, and in Madrid, and another one in the United States uh, that is uh, still not, uh, you know, it's in a private, private hand. So uh, the, all these were burned by the uh, Spaniards upon the colonization or conquest uh, in uh, um, uh, 1500 years ago and uh, sorry 500 years 500, ago yes mm -hmm. 500 sorry and um, uh, they were burned in the name of uh, Christian this is one of the largest books written in, on stone this is part of the Copan archaeological site all these that you see here is writing recording uh, the, the different kings and the dynasties and their achievements for us to see today uh, since the, the classic period that started 200 after christ and this traditional instrument player. This is my mother and my a little bit of my story. Uh, I went to a multilingual school in my little village next to the capital city of Salvador and I was also a professional beach volleyball player in a past life mm -hmm. um, and won a Central American Games gold medal. This it helped me see how other countries had an identity, how they identify themselves, and later on, I, I will tell you the story of of, of my own, uh, you know, region. But um, uh, this helped me um, be, become interesting in, interested in a graphic cultural identity project, which I followed me to England, where I migrated since I was 23 years old. And this is the uh, uh, west coast of Cornwall in England. It was very cold. I couldn't practice beach volleyball there, <laughs> unfortunately. <laughs> but I thought I could, so that's why I went there. And I, I, I thought I could do both. <laughs> and then in 2003, I, re I went back. I returned to, to London. I, I won this. Uh, uh, scholarship with the proposal of this project uh, that I'm going to show you in mind. And um, I had peer peoples from different cultures, Bulgaria, Greece, Austria, Wales. And this is, this is our, our collective uh, master's um, class. But we were studying very close to a uh, the British Museum holding one of the um, most intricate uh, pieces in the Pre from our Pre Columbian people. So I was walking the streets of London and uh, looking, looking at the signs on, on my footstep <laughs> and, and the sign, the sign of the universe. <laughs> also led me to see uh, the how we could read which is obvious but you know that's when the mm -hmm. the epiphany came the bus and you can see a pictogram here mm -hmm. and you can read it hope all, everyone can read it by lane and and so the idea of creating this this language visual visual based language came to life and um uh, in parallel uh, and, and asked the master's thesis and uh, the language based on the ancestral hieroglyphics. Let's see if this place. Mm, yeah. Uh, 
this is some of the books that were crafted and created for these uh, studies. And um, after the, the presented thesis, the project won the um, Student Sign Design Award and they created a trophy and gave, you know, they gave me some needed cash too in, in Great British Pounds. And this motivated me to, to be able to um, continue the project beyond being just a, a um, um, how would you say, it's an academic project that would stay in a library. So it, it, came, it came to life uh, as, as my own life and as the life of the peoples. So uh, this is one of the pieces presented at the Embassy of El Salvador in London when uh, this exhibi first solo exhibition took place. But then um, uh, the universe took me back to Copan one of the sites I showed you in Honduras, neighboring El Salvador in, in Central America. I'll, I'll show you a map later. And um, uh, we lived in the mountain uh, ne uh, next to the Maya Treaty peoples in this place that overlooked this site. Uh, and I said we because that's where I, I met um, uh, my partner, my husband, Tyler. Uh, who uh, has um, my heritage from his mother's side and also from Kentucky in a traditional Maya ceremony. And this is um, uh, where my process of uh, finding who I, who I was in relation to what I was doing started, uh, started coming together. This is Doña Teresa uh, making some tortillas in the in the fogon, the 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 fire, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and this is the Mauro. Uh, he's here um, uh, sewing his own maize for for nurturing. And uh, these are all photographs uh, I have to know from from Tyler, my husband. And um, uh, this is some of the times where you know, we had meetings with, these are some archeologists, the guide of the archeological site, different people who were part of, of, of conceiving uh, the, the language and uh, a time for reflection. And um, we say with Caroline Robinson in New Zealand with whom another artist, our footsteps keep warm an ancient lineage of birth, life, death, and rebirth. As artists, it is a deep memory that we seek to activate and regenerate. This piece is carved uh, uh, with a um, tulio, uh, indigenous stone carver, master carver. And here we're carving, you, you remember the first uh, uh, pictogram you read, the, the path or walking to, the green child is walking to uh, the, the royal temple. And so here um, uh, we are carving some uh, big boulder from the same Copan River to signpost where the sacred site of uh, Los Sapos, the toads, is located within the mountain. And uh, uh, over there, it's not moving too much, that boulder, which is good because then it's not prone to looting. <laughs> and um, we uh, also, I uh, collaborated with uh, Emundo, um, my brother, uh, who carves these pieces and using the language, the script, uh, he he brings them to life with his um, mastery uh, ancestry learn uh, traits. So uh, Annie, I don't know if you have a video to show in relation to the carver. Is that the first one? Yes. Mm -hmm. The eighty-five. Yes. 
So Annie is going to share now. I'm going to share it, but I need you to stop sharing for me able to share. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me see if I... Here, Frida? Yes. Mm -hmm. Bueno, cuando empecé a trabajar desde niño, por lo menos de nueve años, desde aquí hasta esta fecha, 48 años de, de estar en el trabajo, trabajando, tallando piedra. Después de esto, el, el jade y algunas otras cosas más que se han hecho, piezas grandes, productos de dos metros. personas que vienen de otros países, de mucha bendición porque yo que soy artesano, yo vivo de, de lo que ellos traen a, a nuestro pueblo, a nuestro país, pues, y con ellos más bien hago mi, mi vida, se puede decir, porque de ahí está mi trabajo. Are you still still there, Frida? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am here. Thank you. I will go back to, Adriana? to the screen sharing. Adriana, yes. I don't think anybody saw the video. It didn't come up. Did you have it on your screen? Yes. It didn't show up. But let's no? keep going. And then the next video, why don't I try the next video to see if I can get it to go? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. No, well, or can you replay it? It's very short. Uh, I can try, and I don't know if that'll if, work. If people want to see it, I don't know. Okay, let me see. I'm not sure why that happened. That was really weird. Um, hold on. You didn't even hear the, 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 the sound? We could hear the sound, but we couldn't see anything. The That's sound? Weird. I couldn't. Um, that's weird. No, I, I was able to see it. Sorry. No, no, it's okay. Um, okay. Uh, here we go. Okay. Uh, right. No, it doesn't work. Uh, it's not working for me. Oh, wait. No, it is. Okay. Hold on. I'm going to share my screen. Um, see if we can get it. Okay. Okay. Can people see it? Yes. Now? Okay, we'll try. Yes. The... Bueno, cuando empecé a trabajar desde niño, por lo menos de nueve años. Y desde allí hasta esta fecha, 48 años de, de estar en el trabajo. Trabajando, tallando piedra. Después de esto, el, el jade. Y otras cosas más que se han hecho piezas grandes. Productos de dos metros. Personas que vienen de otros países. De mucha bendición porque yo que soy artesano vivo de, de lo que ellos traen a, a nuestro pueblo, a nuestro país, pues, y con ellos más bien hago mi, mi vida, se puede decir, porque ahí está mi trabajo.
Frida? Yes, I'm here. Okay. I think I lost the connection from my computer. Uh, just while, while Frida... No. Uh, while Frida is, is trying to reconnect, I just want to like like make some notes uh, about what what we are we are we are learning from from Frida. The Mayan civilization is the main uh, group from Mesoamerica. Mesoamerica goes from uh, the uh, central Mexico through all the way down. Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, Belize, Nicaragua, a part of Costa Rica. And the Mayan, as, as she was telling us in, in the presentation, they have a, it was a really complex and advanced uh, civilization in Mesoamerica. They developed really, really like none of other of the civilizations of the original people, the writings through uh, symbolism to geographics as, as, she, as, as she's showing us. And what Frida is doing, she is like re, Thank you. re reinterpreting. Uh, no, Frida, it's it's it, you are showing yeah, us. I'm gonna. I'm about to show. I'm about to show that uh -huh, in the visually for people. Okay. Uh, uh -huh, thanks. And this is um, part of what Adriana to follow up with Adriana. Uh, some of the um, the the book that was written and illustrated uh, in Copan uh, and um, then bound uh, also too. This is the Maya area, and uh, right like Adriana was saying, uh, these are all the archaeological sites that are living. That's a contradiction. <laughs> well, the the people we live, we're here, and these are the sites that are uh, related to the uh, the elite that created these sites uh, between 300 and and 900 uh, after Christ AD. Mm -hmm. And the, the side, the Copan I was mentioning is in Honduras. I don't know if you can see it with the mouth is pointing. Mm -hmm. This is Hoya de Seren, the site of the green child in El Salvador. Mm -hmm. And the rest are, all, all of them are, are Maya sites, part of the Maya area, part of the Mesoamerican area. This is uh, one of my favorite uh, vessels uh, uh, illuminated by a scribe. And uh, here we see how um, an artist looked at, at, at the time. This is this is in the Don Bartonox Harbor uh, Peabody Museum collection here in Washington, in um, Georgetown. Uh, the artist is wearing is sitting in a in a lotus flower position, and is wearing um, a water lily head head brush you know this flower represents the the calligraphic brush and he's wearing a distinctive headband someone is writing in the chat if someone can monitor the, the chat and uh, i can continue or just you know if you have questions please go ahead why is, and this is and he's asking why is this in georgetown um well, because Harvard sponsored um, this question. <laughs> Harvard sponsored a lot of the um, um, uh, investigation in in the site in in Mesoamerica, and so the um, the um, um, they what they did is take a lot of the um, uh, the pieces basically up here to the U.S. University of Pennsylvania, the, the, the stairway I showed you from Honduras with the, the what I call the written book that is carved, that photo, uh, those big sculptures, half of the sculptor, sculptures are in Harvard too. Uh, but that is part of what the, the same, um, uh, the, the, the living peoples 
communities and the government and UNESCO are working together to bring back all those pieces back to the communities where they belong. But in the meantime, there's plenty of them around the world. That's yes. going to be a very slow process. <laughs> I, I know yeah. because a lot of the, a, a lot of the Mayan, Mayan specialists are American or are British or from other countries. And, and, and as this has been happening for a long time, they have the pieces, they are appropriating the cultural heritage of Mayans and other groups. And, 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 and as Frida is telling us, no, they are trying to UNESCO and groups like Frida and people, uh, uh, activists like Frida and others are trying to recover the, those pieces and bring them back to, to their, their original uh, places. And here we see in the back of the of the vessel there is someone two two people sitting, and the one of them on the right is holding the mirror onto the this person here who is the illuminated artist, and so this is a, a you know a real depiction of how the, the government worked and how the artist had a, a very privileged position in in society. At these times, we we were part of the government because we held the knowledge, you know, ancestral in ancestral times. I'm talking uh, of what is was being right, written about too. So all the knowledge of the government also was held by the scribes, and so that's why they have to coordinate holding holding mirrors and just taking care of them. Depict depicted in this vessel. That's why I like it. And this is the phenomena of the polyvalence. Uh, you know, this is part of the, the writing uh, complexities that um, I'm not gonna get into right now, but just so that you can see the conflation phenomena. This is the same hieroglyphic written in five different ways. The first way is the logo way or the picture way, and the last one here is the syllable way of writing the same word Balam, which means Jaguar. Frida, and this is your... your uh, can you explain us, is, uh, this, are these your, your, uh, your, your interpretation of the hieroglyphics, is your language, and uh, how, how much is this based on the original language of the Mayans? Yes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get to that precisely. Thanks for, for the question. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the phenomena on the um, or traditional scripts. And right here is where um, the, the idea of this universal language uh, is explained. Here we see a pictogram. Uh, I don't know if you can see mm -hmm. the skull and bones that represents in our modern contemporary language this, you know, modern uh, ISO language, it means uh, danger, it means um, thumbs, it means uh, venom, etc., poison. And this is uh, the hieroglyph original hieroglyphic or ancestral uh, lahun, which is the human skull. Mm -hmm. And in the, um, in the proposed uh, is new script, uh, this is the new Mayan skull, or or is the ancestor, or uh, the dead grandfather, or transformed grandfather of the green child in the storybook we read at the beginning? Do you remember? Uh, mm -hmm. Participants, <laughs> I'm sorry, I cannot hear you. And um, this is the the line code device for this the new the new vision. And as you can see, there's a standard code for point to point, et cetera. And the color code, and this is the method of reading from left to right, from top to bottom in third column. And like what you see here is, is a new Maya language, a Maya visual language in 23 pictoglyphs that tell the story that are used in the story that I read to you at the beginning um uh, that are here i reveal kind of the code and so if you see cock and with 
attack is fire and which is mountain. Together they create the erupting volcano conceptual concept. The fire plus the stone create the lava bomb. The lava bomb that hit the archaeological the community of Maya people uh, uh, 500 after Christ in the storybook again. I hope you remember. But again, um, I can show it again if you like. And this is the um, uh, house mother, uh, the seed or the, the son and the young man create the family at home. And so on and so forth, every one of these um, symbols have uh, uh, a story related to the cosmovision this is an adobe fat home with a thatch, traditional thatch roof in the garden, the community garden. It is a reflection of, of the way of living as, as would be ideal in our present times and still in some communities. This is the, um, the green child fossil translated at the back. It comes together, all these pieces represent one one a uh, meaning separately and together it, it conforms the green child of mother earth and these are some murals uh, at the archaeological site of the community that was hit here it was where it hit by the lava bomb i don't know if you you remember the lava bomb and here the, it hit the temazcal this is a an ancestral um spa temazcal is the word for uh, uh, ancestral and, and modern word for for the spa or the sauna where you practice rituals uh, yeah. with the heat right? and, uh, led by a shaman or a spiritual leader and these are some of the the languages applied to the surface of the of the same museum of the same site and these are the children of the community uh, where um, I facilitated wor workshops in El Salvador, and they're exploring their own uh, uh, genetic memory here by uh, in immersing themselves in the in the myth of those lines that are not the Roman uh, uh, imposed uh, Latin letters that we were imposed by 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 the Spanish colonization. This is sorry to interrupt. Just a heads mm -hmm. up, we, we have just few, uh, ten minutes to, for sharing. Sorry, I need to give the, 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 the I'm the timekeeper, so it's uh, just ten minutes for the sharing. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes, in the next five minutes I'll, I'll continue, and then uh, in the last five minutes we'll present the the video of El Salvador, and then the questions about the current political situation. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is the some new community murals at the National Museum of the American Indian, where the uh, the um, the language, the the visual language, and is used for education. This is the 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 um, the tree of life being um, in, in in installation being participated with the the, the um, NMAI visitors. And this is some work that bring back some of those uh, ancestral lines through cultural uh, sculptures for the Day of the Dead. Uh, this is in Baltimore uh, with the Indigenous Design Collective. Uh, uh, we're just to part of the collective. And here, if you can play, please, the video. The last video, Adriana. Thank you. Yes. Annie, mm -hmm. I can you share it? I actually, don't... I think you can share it. I think you didn't share your screen last time. We need to unshare this. Um, Frida needs to unshare, and you need to make sure you share. Last time, I think it was Frida's screen was still on there. So if it doesn't work, I can try it again. But go, I think you can do it. OK. Can, Frida... can you start? Uh, uh, stop. There. Okay, now you can check. I stopped. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Anna. Can you see it? Yes. Perfect. So, I will translate. Can you translate, uh, Frida? Can you translate in the chat so people know they need to look at the chat? Um, is that the plan? We are gonna. Yeah, around. I can voice. I can voice it too. Okay, voice. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Frida, can you translate? I think yes, I've sent it to the chat. It's in the chat. Okay. Can every can anybody everybody see the chat, I hope? Actually, I could read it from the chat too. Or, or Adriana, if somebody could. Oh, okay. Uh, the, the massacres of El Mozart, Mozart um, between December 9th and 13th of 1981, the Atlati Battalion under the leadership of Colonel Domingo Monterosa massacred close to 1,000 people from seven hamlets in the department of Morazan. Almost half the victims were under age one, uh, 10, I think. They can see the chat. Yeah, okay.
para yo poder estar escondido. ¿eh? Y, y ahí que pararon para las otras casas, yo siempre ahí me estuve. Cuando ellos estaban ametrallando la, la gente, que las sacaban de las casas así para poder. Y yo viendo, viendo aquello. Y era ese, ese duro, estar viendo, que le estoy mostrando los anillos. Por estar gustando. Thank you. Y entonces yo, ahí mirando. Y ellos haciéndolo. Y era como en el lado que le dio la gente. We can stop now because the translation is. Thank you. Thank you. I think for context, uh, this is important to know that uh, uh, there was a massacre in, in El Salvador, and this is uh, part of uh, one of the survive, uh, uh, survivors of the massacre. It was really a really uh, tough time for El Salvador. I don't know, Frida, if you can share just a small uh, more of context with, 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 uh, with, with uh, our Sangha, what was, what was happening in El Salvador in terms of political situations and why this massacre was, uh, took place and, and the consequences of a massacre like this one, why is people uh, migrating after that, or what are the consequences of, of, of the targeting of indigenous people in El Salvador, uh, as is, has been in other parts of uh, Central America? Yes, yeah, so this is part of the history after taking back from the, the colonization up to the 1800s, uh, the, the indigenous uh, communities were had to uh, be part of a of, of a hacienda system, and that that meant that you know of course they they stole the land like also here in in the United States, but there were no treaties, and so um, after that in 1932 there was another genocide like the one you see, almost the same, but this one was 1,000 people, the one in the video that Adriana played, but in the 1932, it was 32,000 people. And um, the um, uh, current population of El Salvador is, is 5 million. So at that time, at the beginning of the 19th century, 32,000 indigenous was um, a massive loss uh, for, for our, uh, our people. And it was uh, also, uh, a time when um, the the targeting of the indigenous people was uh, continued until the 1980s, and this was the reason why it broke into into a civil war, and also the reason why we stopped wearing traditional dress, traditional shoe. Women we uh, cut the their braids because. Uh, they, they wa didn't wa we didn't want any ident identification because the military basically would lose your life. So uh, that is the difference. It's part of the difference with other neighboring uh, countries that um, still use their dress because, you know, there was more places to hide in the mountains, in the highlands, uh, in, in Chiapas, in, in Petén, in Guatemala. Uh, but in, in El Salvador, there was little place to hide because it's a tiny, tiny country and population. And so um, that is part of the history of, you know, why the migration started during the war. Uh, because of these tensions, the slavery system within the, um, the, um, the fincas or the farm where the indigenous had to work and the, the poverty and uh, that brought the, the migration since the 70s up until today uh, it's the same social um, phenomena right that is just under being undergoing and but i want to share something nice just to finish <laughs> and uh, after the the sad part and um, um this is just 
um, a series of animals from the underworld back to the the project and the work and how um, for the um, Pan American Games uh, we co-designed with the, the athletes that went to the Pan Am Games using the animals from the mythological underworld and using the system to identify with their own Nahual or spirit animal. And I feel proud of, of the characteristics of this animal and, and also the, you know, the cultural identity. And that's, that's I will finish there. Uh, and also uh, bring back the topic of the um, indigenous design and the uh, appropriation of this, um, um, some of these emblems that belong to the communities that are being used now by, say, big fashion brands or, or even just by people who commission the weavers and you know don't have a relationship with the community just emphasize the fact that um, the relationship with the community is essential uh, to be able to to learn first uh, taking off the hat you know your own hat and just trying to wear the hat of the community and from there everything else will flow uh, you know, once you have that learning, and this is part of the the, the purpose of of, of this uh, webinar. Thank you. And uh, sorry, my, just my final words. The DNA of a culture is its language. The rootstock is our people, and the seeds of a language are found in cultural artifacts. And the voice of its people in the stories. We are artists, designers propagating a culture is our practice. And at the center of the creation, my creation may still stand the, the cacao, the immortal cacao or chocolate tree. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Thank you, Frida. Thank you, Frida, thank you so much. I wonder if we could start with a question that was, um, that was in some of the things we said we would talk about is just for you to share a little bit about how the current policies of the U.S. are affecting the indigenous in El Salvador and in the, all the Mayan uh, cultures there. Would you be willing to share about that? Yes, the, the, can you repeat it, please? Sorry, yeah, my just the, the, yeah. <laughs> You're looking for his dinner. <laughs> just the way that the policies Sorry? of the U.S. and current, the way the policies of the U.S. current policies have affected the indigenous Mayan people throughout Central America. Is there a particular comment you have about that? Yes. Uh, ah, yeah, okay. Well, uh, it is uh, um, right now, uh, the way I see it uh, is that we had to migrate in the 70s and 80s, like I explained, for the different civil wars happening in Honduras, Guatemala, Honduras, Guatemala, and El Salvador, a result of the, the colonization, right, like I explained and indigenous people losing their land, also losing our I identity. And this is very important because when we migrate to the US, to uh, Los Angeles and Washington DC, the main uh, 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 urban capitals of migration, we don't, we don't, we cannot immerse in this culture. And because we are coming back from also struggles in, 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 in our own countries, then we try to identify with movements here like the gang movement already present in LA and here in, in DC. And we take that back and that is uh, the main source of migration at the moment because these gangs are uh, a very um, uh, effervescent presence in the, in the downtown areas of of these countries, the capital cities and beyond, and and so uh, this is the main the main reason of migration is currently violence, but it's 
a derivation of of um, uh, not being able to ex exercise your own traditions, for example, uh, the arts or music, etc. All that is causes an empty vessel, and that is the reason why people start uh, joining violent movements. And then uh, those violent movements affect other people who are just trying to work and probably cannot work anymore and just are surviving and coming up for for a subsistence. Yeah, I don't know if that's good. Yeah, that's helpful. Really, no. that's, that's a good Thank answer. you. And mm -hmm. I, I, I will make a comment of that, if you don't mind, uh, that it's uh, that's important. Mm -hmm. and That's why we uh, asked Rita to, to share with us. It's because a lot of the migrants that we have here, the Latino migrants, are from indigenous uh, communities. We have these groups here living in the United States, uh, Salvadorians, especially here in the DC area, but Mayans are everywhere, because Mexico, uh, from Mexico, from, from Honduras, from Guatemala, from El Salvador, these all migrants that we are hearing. Not only, not only Maya Lencas, uh, other communities, oh, mm -hmm. but the Maya peoples preserve their, their language their more language. in El Salvador. Uh-huh. Yes. Yes, and tell us so, more about that, you know, the, how you are living, how these communities are living here in the United States and are present in this society. Yes, and if you you like to learn more, the International Mayan League is mm -hmm. uh, doing some very strong work uh, in first of all preserving rituals and preserving uh, traditional practices, uh, spiritual practices, also artistic practices, and uh, but also uh, bringing essential trans translation uh, services through women healers at the border who are able to translate to children, three-year-old children who cannot speak other than their native tongue, not, not even Spanish, right? Just different idioms or, or dialects. And so they are doing that work of being able, you know, little work because resources are scarce that the government is not doing in accommodating the different, um, the different tribes, right, that, that migrate. So there's plenty of um, of issues right now, and one of them is is that. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and this Mayan League is a movement. It's an organization or movement that Frida is one of the founders. And right now, I know they are. No, no, I'm not. I'm not a founder. I just collaborate. Just, collaborate just collaborate with, with that. But they have right now a really nice mm -hmm. project, this one that she's telling us. There is a lot of women coming to the border to translate, and, and they are found, uh, funding this this caravan. Now, it's not a caravan. It's a a delegation, no, Frida, or, of indigenous uh, women who are coming to help the indigenous elderly. The elderly. Mm -hmm. Yes, elderly who, who can... Uh, serve as shamans or as spiritual leaders uh, and as healers to 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 be able to have uh, the presence of women who can be be bridges with the with the authorities. Mm. So is it if it's and okay? The, you know, let's, of have, course. let's have people. If you want to turn on your video, feel free. If you have a question and you want to. Um, pop in with a question. Let's open it to everyone who's here. You can either type it in the chat or you can just unmute yourself and ask a question. Or you can write it in the chat too, if you like. Yep. And Camille says she couldn't see the English some English, oh, but uh, the videos will be available on the on the making visible making has invisible dot org website with the translation. Mm -hmm. Frida, why don't you tell us uh, if if uh, I have an, a question? Why do you do? There's no question. 
-hmm. No, but but I, I have one. If you don't mind, mm -hmm. I think it will help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but why why did you decided to to do this? Uh, use the uh, your own symbols, your own hieroglyphics. Why did you feel the need to become with a new interpretation of the hieroglyphics? Why was the motivation behind that? Why no? Why are you just searching that uh, connection, but but doing it in a new way? Because normally the knowledge, some of the knowledge, the way we interact with the knowledge is behind sometimes museums and uh, or academic academic research that is not led by by the community and by regenerating because it's just a regeneration right from uh, a, a creation an original creation uh, you are making it relevant to the new generation so that there is an interest in in the heritage i don't know if that yes if that makes sense yes it makes sense it, it, because it's interactive and um and uh, also during the workshops you know i facilitate workshops here in dc every school who calls me i just go and um and and the children is is immediate it's immediate when when it's their heritage, they just, they just, you know, they just read it. They read it on my clothes. They read it on the, on the phone case. I do a lot of, you know, other fun stuff. Um, and um, they, they're, they're very, uh, they're super interested. And so, well, even with elderly people too, from uh, my community here, uh, we've, we've done workshops and, and it's like a, a opening another door to other parts of 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 the brain, but also the, those doors also lead into the spirit. And the spirit has been uh, with us since you know thousands of years. So that is a uh, weapon for decolonizing. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's really nice. It's beautiful. No. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I, I Annie has a question here. Uh, um, yeah, my question is: Are most of the El Salvadorian people in DC of Mayan heritage? Would you say? No, it's because we have uh, just a, a part, western part of the country. Uh, uh, then it's mostly Nawa. Nawa is, is the people, Pipil, and uh, some Lenca. But the, um, the main issue is that in El Salvador, there's very little, there's hardly any living community. There are, though, and they need to ma be made visible. But these communities, uh, how would you say? are indigenous but they're not actively exercising their traditions or part of a, a communal land system it's very hard in El Salvador to have a community because they're we would they were you know they seem to have disappeared but we're there they're there I don't know if you, you see what I mean whereas in Guatemala um, there's more active communities because there's more population Okay, thank you. So, so, so yeah. do most people identify mm -hmm. indigenous then? Most it's of the people would identify? Very them? little people, very little. Mm. No, and then in El Salvador and in Latin America, that is, um, there, that is, you know, there's a lot of ra racism, so not many people. And it's because so of that means. Mm -hmm. That means there's no conscious consciousness of 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 who we really are because that was hidden away in those graves, all those graves of those genocides too. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. Mm. You see, in spite of the, the, the colonial system of, of um, you know, erasing, erasing everything from your memory. Your, it starts with the land, then with the tongue, right? With the, your language. Mm -hmm. and, and then it expands, then, then that's it. Mm -hmm. you you know you 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 don't have options because yeah. you, first of all you don't have what, what what to live from you cannot practice your traditions if you don't have a land yeah so then you have to like just submerge to other the tradition of the of the colonizer which is what's happened in the last 300 years so we have a couple more questions and so sorry sorry didn't want to interrupt mm -hmm. but uh, oh yeah we have um, a, from Abby. Is there anything you'd like to see communicated in museums about Mayan culture that hasn't been yet done yet? Mm. Yes, that's a, one of the part of the curiosities that. Um, uh, sorry, my family is here. Uh, Tyler, Carl, and Jack. <laughs> so next time you can meet them. But um, uh, they're. The that's the one of the 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 my main sources of inspiration is to know that there was a standard code amongst all the communities that of the map I showed you for 500 years the same written language that was a logo syllabographic a uh, script not an alphabet the alphabet is just letters right. You can call it an alphabet, but it's not an official alphabet. And so there was communication between all these sites uh, without having any internet connection. But that was killed by the burn, burning of the books, right? So that's the, 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 the strange thing. How can a culture be killed in such a way, but still inscribed in all those monuments that we have? you know, that were still there until 2000 years later. That, and that is simply amazing that the, the, the way of, of seeing the world is, is what it really is what makes that statement still today. Mm -hmm. The monuments couldn't be burnt, but the rest, you know, it remains, it still remains. Uh, and 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 also there is still living Mayans uh, 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 in Mexico in in all Yucatan and you you can you, you, yeah, you can have living living communities of Mayan they are living uh, speaking Mayan they are still living through the tradition but uh, it's because we didn't have that uh, that direct persecution or massacres mm -hmm. there always racism. Oh, you had them too, but not not no, they, no, they done this scale. It's not it, it, it didn't happen like it, it happened in, in, in El Salvador. So you have I don't know, Frida, you can tell us more, but I think there are maybe more Mayans from other countries than El Salvador living here in the United you know, States yes. that, that actually acknowledge mm -hmm. themselves as Mayans. Exactly, yes, yeah, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah, and that's that's the reason because in El Salvador it's it's very washed, but it's there. That is my advocacy. That it's it's, it's living inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. Thank you. There's another question about do the various spoken Mayan languages all or mostly use the same alphabet or, you know, characters. No, that is a dead script. It's dead. I'm sorry to say to say it like that because it's not dead in the elderly. No, that's been passed by oral tradition, oral but you know visual uh, or artistic. But it's it's dead in a sense that it's not written anymore by by anyone supposedly, mm -hmm. according to the academics. Right? The academics can write it because they studied and decipher it. You know all the I believe. Um, how would you say? Universities in also in Paris, different uh, scholars have contributed, but it's it's not it's not a living living uh, script. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. which is unfortunate, but it's 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 the way it is. Mm-hmm. Well, Marie would like to know whether anyone other than those academics is keeping it alive, the language alive, other than you, <laughs> the academics. Yes. Mm, no, no, yeah, please, uh, the respect with all the elderly who who are in their communities and they have that knowledge and maybe they're trying to preserve it too. You see, you're, they're not going to publish it too much. <laughs> so if it's living, it's living in the genetic memory. So this is why I have a problem with saying it's the dead, but it's it's the the way it's the Western has this, decided that it's it's not alive anymore because it's not being used. Mm-hmm. Frida, but but uh, in, in Mexico there's a movement for to recovering Nahuatl, for example, and there are a lot of uh, communities. There there is even a uh, newspapers written in, in, in Nahuatl and seeing, uh, and now we have uh, even news being told in Nahuatl, which is another language. There is something similar with Mayan, like recovering in an organized way. Um, no, I, I am very little now. Uh, maybe in Mexico that I don't know of. Mm-hmm. In El Salvador, they only teach you the numbers, like the ones you saw. Mm-hmm. That's 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 all. That's and in, good. for example, Guatemala, sixty uh, percent of the population speaks speaks Mayan dialects that are very similar and very different at the same time from each other. And they don't. The government doesn't translate any communication. Hmm. Too. Mm-hmm. So Frida, before we finish, yeah, I'm so wondering. Oh, sorry. It's so, uh, mm-hmm. I'm, yes, one, uh-huh. I'm wondering if there's yes, something that um, something you really think that people outside of the Mayan community need to know that would really be helpful to take forward. Like, what could be the most beneficial thing that those of us who are just learning about Mayan culture from you now could really know and take forward? What would you want us to know? Well, and with indigenous, not just Mayan, the cosmovision and the way is almost the same. Um, in a, in like someone is mentioning the Maori, it's the same principles almost. Uh, a, a piece uh, using the um, resources in the um, most um, in harmony with every every member of. Of, of the world and the natural world uh, and um, the, the, the way resources are used are just used when, when they're needed. So that those principles are around all the regions. It's, it's not just one people, but everyone, all the indigenous communities follow the same, the same uh, um, guide, right? The guide of the earth. The, the earth is the teacher, and so that is that is what um, maybe I, I can say about that. 